Hola mi gente, Ms. Malcolm Hughes here. Welcome, welcome back. Today we're going to do another book review. We will be reviewing Moth to a Flame by Ashley Antoinette. And the book is, whew, <laughs> let's get into the premise. The book is about a young woman by the name of Raven. We meet her when she is in her senior year of high school and she's really trying to figure out what the future holds for her. Her father is the biggest drug lord in Flint, Michigan. And she is the princess of the city, or at least of her hood for that reason. And think Fly Girl, think the coldest winter ever, kind of in those genres of the young, hottest thing, trying to figure it out, figure out what's next for her. She's ruling the streets. She's on the prowl for a man. and. I'm going to make a lot of comparisons to The Coldest Winter Ever, and I just think that's inevitable when reading this book. I think that Sister Soldier really just laid the foundation for these type of novels, and that was the blueprint, right? You can't write in this style without a reference to Sister Soldier and The Coldest Winter Ever coming up. So though I will make comparisons to that, it is still its own entity. Ashley Antoinette definitely created her own story and that will come through as well but in essence that is what the story is about we follow this young girl she gets into the woes of relationships and trying to figure out what it means to be a ride or die and the choices that she makes as a result and how it impacts not only her life but everyone connected to her that's the premise of the story now we get into it, there are some things I liked about this story, there are some things I didn't really like about this story, and we'll unpack them. So one thing I really appreciate about the story is that I was never bored. Even though while I was initially reading it, I was like, is this going to be too reminiscent of the coldest ones ever? It really isn't. There is the kind of trope of girl wants guy in this sense is ethic. I talked about that a little bit when I said I was reading this book. Ethic, ha ethic has his own entire spinoff series based on this book. I will be reading it. <laughs> but this very charismatic fine dude who she is feeling who kind of looks down at her as like, you got a young girl mentality. I wouldn't be intertwined with someone like you grow up. And so in that sense, it was very much reminiscent of Midnight from the coldest winter ever and winter desiring to be with him. And he's just like, grow up. But there is a twist here. Um, Ethic doesn't, Ethic doesn't not find her attractive. He just thinks that she needs to mature and that she's making bad choices and she's not seeing the obvious that's in front of her. And then because she doesn't, get the attention that she wants from ethic there is a dude from around the way who is super grimy again this was reminiscent of the colors ever i'll talk about why who is super grimy but his name is my son and that's who winter ends up falling for because he's older because he turns her on to different things because he turns her out she is just stuck to him like glue he's her first she doesn't really know love romantically and so he gives her what she's desiring which is attention which is wild because she has a father and mother and little sister who obviously like adore her and appreciate her so much but she wants the attention she's at that age she wants the attention from someone of the opposite the opposite gender that's what she's craving and that's what she wants and my son steps in and gives her that it ends up being the worst decision of her life <laughs> I won't go into full details, but this storyline is what I really appreciated. Just all of the challenges that Raven has to go through. And so one thing I can say is I was never bored reading this book. I was absolutely never bored. I was invested in the characters. I wanted to know what they, where they were going with each storyline. So with Raven and Maison, I wanted to know that would go, where that would go. With Raven and Ethic, wanted to know if that had any possibility. Raven and her best friend, Nikki, read the book <laughs> raven and her family listen my zon is up and coming and he wants to be connected to raven because of her father and so that comes with his own circumstances his own challenges his own detrimental decisions that are made so again the storyline in itself is very engrossing it pulls you in and you want to know what's going to happen i did enjoy the style of writing it was 
honestly surprisingly profound it's written in that kind of omniscient so i initially thought it might be from raven's perspective but because it's not we get so many deep insights that raven wouldn't be able to give us because she's young and she hasn't learned a lot of life lessons yet but our narrator really kind of gives us what raven is lacking it gives us tidbits and knowledge of like what she doesn't know yet and not in the sense of foreshadowing but really in analyzing and breaking down what she's missing the lessons she hasn't learned and it really is deep and profound lessons for young people trying to find their way and i really i love that so much about the book the style of writing itself was good as well it was quickly paced again was never bored definitely enjoyed the the wise tone that the narrator had uh, again, there weren't major plot holes or anything in the storyline and it was a lot going on so I really appreciated that. On the other hand, though there were no major plot holes, there were certain decisions being made that I was like, not that I disagreed with, but there were certain major events. So for instance, at one point, Myzan does something to Raven and she looks him dead in the eyes. You ain't know that was him? <laughs> That was literally a question I had while reading. Like, girl, you ain't know that was him? You didn't know that that was your man doing this to you? Like, so for, for me in that instance, that was a little less believable. There was also just other situations that would come up every once in a while. And I'd be like, ah, that, I just would have dug deeper into that. For instance, there's toward the end with Raven and Ethic. I was just like, that didn't seem as believable. It's just certain moments where I just question whether or not the characters for them to be as wise as they had seen throughout the book there were just certain moments where i was like eh would they really fall for that eh would they really say that I remember at one point ethic says something and i really pondered i stopped reading the book and really thought about it i was like would he say that because it felt out of character for who he had been developed to be but overall it didn't take away from the book i enjoyed reading it um definitely enjoyed the suspense I was reading another book and this book kind of took precedent but there were there, it can be uh stressful it can be very stressful so there were points where i'd have to like put it down and like take a reprieve but i really enjoyed reading this book definitely think that she's writing the coldest winter ever like you're looking for like that new from what i could see like someone who's dominating urban fiction right but for someone who's dominating this genre ashley antoinette is definitely killing it with the series ethic has like i think five six books already so definitely definitely a series that folks are really invested in another thing i could say i appreciate about this book um and again it's the comparison to the coldest ones ever i can't not do it is that you know everything we wanted for midnight and winter like i feel like raven got everything winter didn't get even though she fell into some of the same foolish uh traps and she ended up worse for the wear than winter did because of uh, just her naivete honestly i do appreciate that she like things we wanted <laughs> without me saying too much things we wanted for winter and midnight um you know raven has a better you know a better outcome in that area so i do really appreciate here even though two separate books two different authors i really appreciate it i was like raven's getting things that we wanted for winter and i that brought me joy i i loved that for her love the maturity and the growth love the character development that we see here though in many ways she made decisions that i didn't agree with but also that's a part of life right peaks and valleys ups and downs while you're trying to improve and go forward, you sometimes have missteps and they set you back a little bit. Such as life, such as the game. I really enjoyed this book. Definitely think it's worth checking out. If I had to give it my score of read now, read when you have time or read if you want. I did really enjoy it. So if you're really into this type of genre, definitely, definitely read it. But I think generally speaking, I would say read it if you have time. I would say definitely pick it up. I wouldn't start throwing things off of your TBR to get to it, but I would definitely read it as soon as you have time. 
So that is my review of Moth to a Flame by Ashley Antoinette. The book that I'm currently reading is Open Water by Caleb Azuma Nelson. Super duper excited to come and discuss that with you all. Long story behind that one for me. I'll discuss it in the review. And until the next time, I'm Ms. Malcolm Hughes, one who believes that books are sometimes better than people. Please remember to give time time, to be kind to each other, and to have the best day of your life on purpose. Peace, adabo, adios, ciao.